We've actually got this little dream team. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, that's rubbish. That's on the list of things you don't say on camera. And I was walking across about to put an extractor fan up top and I thought, ah, this is dangerous. I spend too much time just in silence thinking. Ay, ay, ay. Whoa, you're psycho. Uh, you used your ladder so badly that you literally made the news. Oh, this is shambolic. Oh. Guys, I've got an exciting little business update for you. Oh. So do you guys remember at the boat job when I said this? I either need to hire someone else to go into the office with me or I need to hire another employee so that I have like a set day where I'm working. Well, we've got quite an exciting little update on that this week. We're gonna roll the intro and then I'll show you around this job. Right, so this week we've got an exciting little project on because we've got multiple projects on across multiple different sites. And the exciting thing is we've got Chester here. Good morning, fellow oinkers. <laughs> and he is gonna be looking after this site and all that it contains. And what we've got going on at this site is when we're starting with this, we're running a 25 mil four core across from this distribution board all the way over to the other side of the building, which we'll get into later. This plant room was actually installed by us quite a few months back, but as lovely as it was and as beautiful as it all looks, the video was really boring and directionless because I was in a really boring directionless time in the month. We're not gonna dwell on that. What we are gonna dwell on is this job because we've got loads to do and we've got loads to do this week, so let's get into it. Ah. All right, so I think the first job that we've got to start with, Chester this morning has already ran in this 16 mil. So we've got a whole new annex project going on at the same time while we're doing this separate thing. Let's go see what I've been up to. We're gonna let Chester show you around the job. Floors are up, which is wonderful. And what we can see is here, is the existing supply to what was the subboard outside down here single phase and what we are doing currently this puppy here is a 16 mil three core which is now another supply to a subboard and then later on we're going to bring in a four core 25 mil which is going to be the new three phase supply to the old subboard which is now going to be the main board this is our new subboard going in a little single phase one for this annex area. And this is the supply, the 60 mil three core. So we're coming around here. I'm just gonna cut this off because we've got to come through this last hole in the noggin and then up through the floorboard in some trunking, make off into the consumer unit. But we're just gonna cut it a bit shorter because there's no point pulling all of this slack through. It would take forever. So we're gonna cut it up to here, making sure that they don't cut it too short and then go from there. She shouted out, I'm on ya. Kabush, kababush, She's still singing. <laughs> Never be the same. No pretty world more. The world will lose sunset. I am in paradise. The audio that you can hear is split left channel and right channel. We do that usually so that you don't have to hear the other person heavy breathing while one person is talking. Usually me doing the heavy breathing, but what we've realized is when we're working with Chester, my wife has permanently got Chester singing in her left ear. What we're going to be doing today is this. We're gonna be wiring up a switch fuse here. So currently the tails come in through this. So this is something we did a few months back. So the other side of this wall here is the main head. So that's where the main fuse comes in and all the meter and everything. And then what we've done is we've brought it in through the wall, up and into this board and then out and off. So this was done quite a few months back. What we need to do, break into that supply and put in a 100 milliamp up front RCD. This is the RCD here. And the reason why we're doing that basically is because I want to put the whole place onto TT. We've already got this section of the house on an earth rod, um, but it's backed up still by the PME. But we want to put the whole place on an earth rod so that when we're running off grid, which the amount of solar that is going in here is he's singing again. Oh, this is shambolic. So the reason why we don't use the PME earth or the TNCS earth is because when we're off grid, we're not actually allowed to do that. We have to bond our own neutral earth over here and completely separate from their system. So we're doing that via an earth rod. And if you put the whole house on an earth rod, you need to have at least 100 milliamp RCD protection on it. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So I never have seen this before, a full kit of starrett bits without anything missing, but I finally treated myself to these and they are absolutely glorious. The exciting thing for the week is 
I've got basically four different projects across four different locations. Now, all of them have fallen on this week, so I can't be in four places at once. So we've actually got this little dream team that has been assembled. So today is Monday. I'm gonna get Chester started. We can do all of the fiddly bits, run the big cables through, connect them up, all those bits. I'm gonna to go to another job. We're gonna leave Chester here to crack on on his own for a couple of days, and then we'll come back on Wednesday and see how he's got on. But the plan is for today, we want the power outage to be as minimal as possible. We're gonna try and keep it to below like 40 minutes. So I'm gonna get everything completely prepped, ready to go, lay in there, ready for the power cut. What we've got to do now is run the 25 mil four core through. So you can see it there. What we're doing is we're kind of stopping halfway along the run. We're feeding this side through, although we're currently getting stuck on a joist. So we're gonna to have to try and cut that out. And then because we'll know the length back to the board, we can then pull it back thread it through that nice straight run and back to the board, so. There she be. There it goes. Okay, wait there two seconds, because it's on the pipes. The pipes, the pipes are calling. So now, I think this is in the loft space next door. So that is gonna pull through quite nice and easy there. We have the joyous job of going up in the loft. Up there. One sec. Yeah. Go is that all right? Yeah, that's good. Are you the right size for that little hole over there, Cordy? Possibly not. My Pilates instructor told me I'm a very bendy boy. Okay, that's stuff you don't, that's on the list of things you don't say on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Are my enormous love handles showing through this? No. Oh, good. How much more do we need, Corey? Uh, not that much, just one minute. James is just feeding it down. I like it to touch the floor, ideally. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, go on. Ow, these pipes are hot. All right, lovely. Let's do it. Not oh, very often you have a loft big enough to put a stand-up torch in. All right, so now we have the fun task of making off this SWA. So, it should be the same in theory as making off every other SWA you've ever done, because, you know, it's not too big, really. So step one to doing an SWA gland, forget the boot. Step one to doing an SWA gland, make sure you've got a nice tight boot. So what I do to get it perfect every time, is I slide it down, bring it around, and then you see that little wrinkle there? So you can see where that is. So now you've got something nice and tight to cut to. There we go. Because there's nothing worse than a loose boot. There you go. Boom, tight, beautiful. Step two for doing an SWA gland. Get this bit out here. Slide this up, like so. Work out exactly where this needs to go. So this needs to go. We'll put it about there, yeah? Now I know there's a million gadgets to do this a bit quicker, but personally, I hate having too many tools. And I hate having too many gadgets. And I think that the gadgets aren't really that much quicker or that much more reliable than just doing it the old school method. And especially because this is an educational piece, we're gonna teach it the educational old school method. Step three, strip the cable. Another lovely little tip actually that I got off of the internet is when you first do your bend on the armoring, don't do a little gentle bend like this. You wanna do a fast snap just to shock the metal like that. Take it by surprise. The reason being it just comes off cleaner because if you, if you do a nice slow gentle bend, this is serious by the way, this is actually not a joke. If you do a, nice, if you do a slow bend like that, you see it forms the metal. Whereas if there's a nick in it already from the hacksaw and you just give it a quick, it just snaps the end off. Step four. We're gonna get this side stripped back, ready for the olive to go over. So this is a CW gland, meaning that you've got that extra little compression washer at the top here. What you never wanna see when you're doing these types of outdoor glands, the reason why I've done an outdoor gland is because I wasn't sure if we were gonna end up doing this, this side of the wall or the other side of the wall. But you never wanna see the arm rings up past that compression washer. Another little tip for you is you never want to use anything with teeth on it. If you're using something with teeth on it, you need to take yourself home, sit yourself down, have a nice cup of tea, and think about your life. We are ready to terminate this now. So I've made off this end here, um, this little earth tag, because we're going to be using the armoring as an earth. So this cable that we have in England, still wire armored cable. It's fantastic stuff. And I say it's fantastic because this lasted the test of time. I will be working in buildings that have got this cable that's still operating after being there for 50, 60 odd years and it's still working absolutely fine. So I feel like armoured cable, when done right, will outlive you. Another little thing to note, there is a right and a wrong way of doing this. So people think of a lock ring, they think of it just screws on, but actually the rounded edge wants to be facing the gland and the flat edge wants to be 
the bit that's actually touching it. Oh. Oh. All right, that now is all wired in, ready to go for power outage. So let's go check on them upstairs. <laughs> you fell through a seam into a jam machine. It was like a, a warehouse that made jam and they had all the clean catering equipment inside and they had like this corrugated built structure yeah. with a big jam making machine, the jammer. Was the lid off? Lid was off. Sounds very Wallace they and Gromit-esque. They were Gromit pouring S. strawberries in. And I was walking across about to put an extractor fan up top and I thought, ah, this is dangerous. So I went back downstairs and grabbed a board and I came upstairs with this board and I fell through. And I caught myself on the joists, but I was this close to being Chester Jam. I fell through the roof of a French bakery once. I was in a world of pan. Now that that is clipped in and all the slack is out of it, I can now terminate that side and we're almost ready to do the changeover. All right, so let me show you what the crack is this side of the cable. So this board and trunking was done months ago and it's sort of been an ongoing project. We've got these different Shelly devices. So these are the Shelly 3EMs. These here basically just as a smart relay so we can monitor the power on various different devices. You see the CT clamps here going off we've got that going back to a central system and basically the customer is going to program something so that they can make smarter choices and distribute his power a little bit better. Um, but that's not really what we are interested in. What we are interested in for today is this cable right here. We've got to get this cable out and into a breaker up here. The trouble is it's way too short. So I think I, I basically rigged this little setup up in here. I used a piece of roofing angle bracket, cut a hole in it and I used that just to strap the armored cable in so I could terminate it properly. But I might have to keep that, but just move it up a little bit. I'm gonna jig it around somehow so that I get a bit more length on the cable. I think what I'm gonna have to do is take that little angle bracket off, install it up there, re-terminate the cable there, and then bring the cable in through a new hole there into the breaker. So we've got this pre-made. Now, to be honest with you, this is just roofing angle from I guess Wix or B&Q or somewhere, but it works perfectly, like absolutely perfectly in that scenario in there, like I showed you earlier. So we've got the holes marked up this side. That's all you do. I did that. Yeah, Chester did that, all right. You don't need to take credit for everything. What I'm gonna do is my special punch. That's not my yours. little hammer. I took out the alarm box. Get your little drill. Put a little bit of cutting compound on there. Very good. There's a little reminder on there saying, Loose connections can cause fires. Please check. I stick them everywhere. Just to remind me. Oh, careful. You got stuff on that? Uh, no, but. You got a bit lit? Whoa, you're no, psycho. I'm, I know, I'm confident. Hang on, hang I'm on, careful. hang on. Let's use this. Back in my day, we didn't have stops. We just hit the cable and embraced it. If you hit it, well, you know. That's how I lost four of my electrician friends. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Peel that banana. So we can be here together, is Like a snake sheds its skin. Wow. I probably did it, didn't I? <laughs> Six did inches, rhino, four inches, three inches, two inches. Well, you psycho. Surely you cut them off first so you don't get no fish hooks. He does what he wants. And you know what? We let him. You're going to be catching tuna on that. I spend too much time just in silence thinking. That sounds terrifying. That's my problem. <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. No. But I know myself well. Hey Mike. All right, so Chester has turned the power off. So now I'm pretty much finished wiring this gland in here. So this is gonna be the new supply into the board and he can start rejigging all of that about. Do you wanna go check on the boy over there? Let's do it. This is the current supply to the DB that Corey's working on over there. This is gonna become the new supply to this board. So these mains tails, which come from the cutout, are gonna come into this isolator here. And then from here, we have the 25 mil four core that we run in, that goes to Corey's board. And then this cable that now feeds that board is gonna come from that board to feed this board. That's the plan. So I'm taking him out of here, we've isolated it. Corey's sorting out that side. I'm gonna take it out before I blow him up accidentally. And this, I'm gonna have a go as well because currently this looks a bit bleh. It's kind of pushing this cable against, this is a little bit twisted. So I'm gonna see if we can pull this out whilst we're doing this changeover bring it in front of the 25, get rid of some of the excess and keep it nice and tidy. Cause look, it's bent this a little bit cause it's taut, too taut. Turns out that this here is a 40 mil hole 
um, and this is a 25 mil for the existing SWA. So if I wanted to come in there, the hole's gonna be too big. But we've got a little bit of time and some spare bits and bobs. So what we might do is make a little conversion plate out of this. So we cut him down and then we can stick a 25 mil hole in the middle, bolt that onto the bottom of this panel, and then hopefully that'll do what we wanted to do. That did kind of what we wanted, kind of, yeah. No, it did what we wanted, let's have confidence. The swoop is much nicer now. The plate has worked. I'll be honest, it's not the most prettiest thing that we've ever created, but it does do the job. So it's now converted that so he's in there nice and solid. So now all that's left is just to terminate this bad boy up into here, and then we're done. All right, so while Chester has got the cushy job over the other side, we've got the absolute pig job here which is to basically get this glanded off properly. This is only meant to be a short section of the video and this whole thing is turning into a video in its own right. It's gonna be like a 20 hour long video. James, are you above me? Yeah. Can you help me just, oh, you see this cable here? Do you see my finger? Yeah. Maybe, oh, I don't know what situation it's in up there. Is it clipped? It's through a joist, like very close. Oh, I don't know if you're gonna get the bend on that. That was a pig, but we got it in, mostly. Now I've just got to get that one in. I've only, only like completely destroyed all of my fingers. I'm gonna start wearing gloves. What a lovely little loop. In here, in here, in there. Oh yeah, just like that. Cause I'm savage, I use an impact driver for lids. Lid time. Back at it again with the impact driver. And that board is on. Right, we're ready to power on. There we go. He's done a lovely job there, hasn't he? Let's go hand over the job to Chester. Here's the official, no, I don't really, I was hoping to have some kind of ceremonial thing, but I don't have it. Here, you can have a biscuit. A sheath torch. Here we go, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, no, just, just uh, take, take, it. Take, take a biscuit. Really? Right, so, uh, that made me feel uncomfortable, weirdly. <laughs> I think what I'm thinking is, if tomorrow you just work really late, and then Wednesday when I'm here, Perfect. we can have a nice early finish. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you so much. That's all right. I'm so happy to be all here. All right, I look forward to see it on Wednesday. Okay. This can look really good. Bye. Bye. Bosh. We are at another job site. So I'm at the complete other end of the country now to the other lads. So they are there, brrr, cracking on, beavering away, forever in my hearts, forever in my thoughts. We are doing a solar job, basically, and it has to be off grid, which means obviously earthing conundrums, as always. When I talked about, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do, you know, I don't wanna come off the tools, I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna do that, blah, 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 I still wanna be involved. I feel like I'm finding at the minute this lovely balance. And now, of course, I feel life is a pendulum. You're never really in balance, are you? You always swing one way or the other. So I'll probably be out of balance again next week and I'll be crying again. But for now, I'm absolutely loving it because these jobs this week are cracking on without me. But the hardest thing is, right, I can be a real terrible micromanager. It's a toxic trait because I'm a perfectionist. I like things done a certain way. So to be able to let go and come back is really difficult. But the key to that that I've found, which I've been trying now over the last couple of months, is finding people that are better than you. I don't want to be some like boss. I'm a friend first and a boss second. Probably an entertainer third. I'm working with them, right? They're working with me, they're helping me and I'm helping them. And there's people out there who are going to be better than you because you're not good at everything. Find someone who's better than you in different things. And then when you come together, you've got this beautiful team. What I'm doing here right now, while Ben is inside of there, here, let's say hello to Ben. Say hello, Ben. Hello, Ben. Ben is fitting the uh, Solar Edge gateway and battery. The gateway is going inside of there, but because this house has the potential to be going off grid, it means we need an earth rod. Now, what's interesting is there is already an earth rod that has been installed here, so I'm just testing this out to see if it is good enough. I don't think it is good enough, so I have another earth rod that I'm going to connect in. What's interesting is I'm not going to disconnect that one. I'm going to connect them both together in parallel. There's a magic number when it comes to earthing. That number is 1667. What I want you to do all the apprentices that follow this channel and all the learners, I want you to go to your textbooks and come down to the comments below and tell me why that is a magic number. Because this correlates exactly tightly to the reason why yesterday we had to use a 100 milliamp RCD main switch on that job. So 
go down below, use Ohm's law and tell me why 1667 is a magic number. I'm gonna get digging this earth rod pit in. Basically at this job, what we're installing is a solar edge gateway. So I'll show you that here. This will allow us to use our battery and our solar off grid. Um, if there's a power cut or for whatever reason we want to go off grid. So basically the tails drop out of the board there. They're gonna connect into this gateway back out of the gateway into the board and it's as simple as that so yeah i've got a game i feel like you'd appreciate yeah and i play with my daughters when we're waiting for anything it's called bin or keep right we'll start it off easy so bin or keep spaghetti bolognese versus pizza keep one bin the other keep spaghetti bolognese bin the pizza i love spaghetti bolognese when it's done it's done right with a bit of cinnamon cinnamon bin or keep spirits or beer not really into the spirit ram say beer bin or keep never being able to do work and videos yeah or never been able to travel again oh never been able to do videos hands yeah. down you can either never have any seasoning on your food yeah ever again or everything you eat for the rest of your life has to be in pizza form in pizza form in pizza form oh i take pizza form all day long yeah yeah all right i think i have about three dominoes a week <laughs> Basically, your life would be completely unaffected. <laughs> I'm propping dominoes up. Do you want to see something cool? Go on. Oh, that's rubbish. <laughs> this is absolute garbage. Not bad, that, is no, it? Good effort. What we'll do is we're going to drop this earth rod box into here. We're going to keep this earth rod. I've already disconnected it the other side. We're going to connect that earth rod in parallel to that one. Now, obviously, in an ideal scenario, these would be a distance apart from each other, but to be honest, we don't really need that earth rod anyway, so I can either disconnect it or I can connect it in parallel, which I'm going to do. So. Right, so all that's left here now is just the connecting up of the data and the comms connection. So we've got a 10 kilowatt hour battery, um, the actual Solar Edge home hub inverter, and then the gateway over there. But I thought I'd show people how to do the heat shrink labeling, because I get asked a lot what I actually use for that. All I use is my normal label printer. So this is the Brother E550W label writer, but the key is the, the, the tape that you put inside of it. So I've got lots of different types and sizes of heat shrink tape. That just goes directly in. I don't need to modify it. I don't need to do anything. You can make some adjustments on the app for preferences. There's an app that all this will connect to. But personally, I just find it equally easy just to type in on here. So I want to make some labels. So I'll show you what I do. I'm literally going to type it in RS485 um, house. That's going to pop out. There you go. I'm going to do that again. RS485 battery. There we go. So now all I have to do is slide it onto the actual physical cable itself. Then I'm gonna heat shrink that on. And that is it. So yeah, I'm just using my normal labeler with some fancy label tape. Now, while this job has been going on, obviously we've not gone into deep depth on this job. The other job has been going on fantastically and they've been absolutely smashing it. So let's go check on them. Hey guys, it's a new day and it's eight o'clock and I'm already eating my breakfast, which was meant to be lunch. Um, Chester, the I can't think of anything that rhymes with Chester. Really, very little <coughs> does. Has absolutely smashed it yesterday. So we're gonna go check and see how he's got on. So this is what Chester's been on with yesterday. So him and James have basically smashed through all of the second fix upstairs. They've done the board as well. Come on, let's, moment of truth, let's see it. That's very, very nice. Okay, cool. All right, should we get on with the rest of the work? Let's do it. Testing time. Testing time. So it's one thing being able to make a nice neat fuse board, but the other thing that's really important is to be able to actually keep on top of all of the documentation for a job. So basically every single circuit that's first fix, they can go through and mark it off as first fixed. Every single one that's second fixed, they can go through and mark it off as second fixed. If you're missing any accessories, then you know um, because they're all there labeled out and listed. So yeah, that's quite a nice little thing that they've been keeping on top of and ticking, which is nice. And also the certificate, they've actually, I can see they've created all of the boards and they've been filling out all of their test results. So I'm really, really happy with it, to be honest with you. Like while we were out yesterday doing our job, this has run absolutely seamlessly. We've still got some stuff left to do today. So we're gonna to put another earth rod out there, which seems to be the thing of the week, but I've got a little gadget to make it easier. 
I bought this, which basically screws itself onto the rod, and then you put that in the end of your SDS, and then it just doo -doo 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 -doo, hammers it down into the floor. All right, so I'm gonna go try and find a good place to put this earth rod. Meanwhile, Chester is upstairs testing. Here we are, this is my little office. I'm just gonna test this board. We've done a few of the tests, but um, still got a few. Last night, we just tried to put lights on and then one socket circuit so the customer could crack on laying the floors. So we've got to finish off a few bits and bobs. Um, I've done all the IR tests yesterday, which is good, everything tests fine. I've just had to replace this one RCBO here because it was a 40 amp for a six mil, but the cable is running through floors with insulation. So we're gonna downrate it to a 32 amp, so it's safe. 40 amp, you can have if it's clipped direct or suspended in there so it can breathe nicely. You all know this. So we're gonna do an RCD test and we only record times one but as I am doing the RCD test, I might as well test it on times five as well. Power him on, circuit safe the other end. I'm gonna do my tests, it's gonna automatically. One, two. Readings here we can scroll through, there you go. Our highest at times one, the fault current, 38.6. And that's our times five, but we're not using it. So 38.6 is the recording that we're keeping. Let's whack him on the certificate. Bingo, bango, bongo. Job's done. Testing's done. Oh, lovely. Um, Ch Chester, now, I have got a conundrum for you. Go on. First of all. Conund me. That is flipping oh. awesome. Thank you. I bought another earth rod, which is right here. Um, <coughs> which is right. I did see it. Oh, I put it outside. It's here, one minute. I bought another earth rod and I was all completely prepped and ready to install it. However, we've already installed one earth rod previously over the other side of the property. We're getting six ohms. <laughs> so there's a formula for the 1667. Yeah, well, it's, it's not a specific formula, it's just Ohm's law. Of course. So the, the reason why we have like the 30 milliamp RCD protection, if you have 30 milliamp RCD protection, in theory, your maximum reading for a rod is 1,667 ohms. Reason being, if you divide that resistance yeah. by that current, 30 milliamps, yes. then you end up with 50 volts. So you never want to go over 50 volts touch voltage, because anything over 50 volts, you're going to die. Anything below it, you're safe. That's good. I didn't know that. Did you know that? Probably. Probably. Do you think they did? Do <laughs> I'm you starting think to realise that me and you are the dumbest people involved well, in this channel, which no, is you're worrying. you're just being polite by including yourself, but you're talking about me. No, I'm not. Realistically, in the regs, it's... 100 ohms is your aiming value. That's what you're aiming for, your target value for an earth rod. But six ohms, without there being parallel paths, low. other things that are bringing that reading down, it's, it's low. But the, the water incomer is, is there and it's plastic coming in. So it's not getting a parallel path from that. There's no gas into the property. No. So I don't see what it's getting a parallel path from. The only thing I can think of is maybe the pilings for the ground source heat pump or the foundations. But either way, it's a great reading and I don't actually think we need this because it's solid concrete out there. I don't want to install it. No. We're going to go home. Hey, it's cookie time. Do you want a cookie? Kinder Bueno cookie pie. Oh my gosh. Can Please I feel the weight? Mouth. Please. It's very dense. That's dense. Ah, oh, I wish you could enjoy this with me. They say you can only have one slice a day. Who's they? I've had two before. <laughs> Who's they? Doctors. Tim Spector, I'm sorry if you're watching this. It's very oh. rich. It's got everything in it. Ah. This, this gives you the power to punch an elephant. Right, so all that's left now up here is to do the labels. And what we're gonna do is a nice patch pan print label. We want the 24 mil tape, ideally. Start using yellow because it is easier for people with dyslexia to read. And also, as Chester has just pointed out, it complements the test buttons on the fuse box. Just lovely. lovely. You measure, measure the width of your breakers. So I already know what these are. The patch panel option, which is there. Block length, 17 and a half mil. Now number of blocks, we'd like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 blocks. Separator, I like it inside the little boxes. We need to turn it on reverse, so that's the other way around. And then we just start typing them in. So circuit one is spare. And then we push print. So what I'm gonna do is push this button here. Boop doesn't make a satisfying beep. If brother, if you're watching this, that would be a nice upgrade. Does look good, doesn't it? I think it's pretty good. I think that's good. 
Right, so what I've done is now, I've just put my number, who's installed it, and the date on the inside, just so that if anyone's actually got the cover off because they have issues, they have my phone number, they can give me a call. Hopefully, obviously, it's us coming back and doing repeat work, but if it's not, we can happily tell the installer to get lost and get off of my client's property. We've also put the labels on the inside of the board, not just on the outside. The reason being, when you're testing and fault finding things, you've got the cover off. It's nice just to have it immediate reference there. You see exactly what it is you're working on. So it costs you nothing to do and it's very easy and quick. So yeah. Did I mention I went to the Nightingale? What's the Nightingale? The Nightingale! Well, I mean, I know Florence Nightingale, but what did you do? Her the... hospital in London. Oh, right. What did you do there? There's a picture of me in all of the textbooks, not using my ladders very safely. <laughs> no. Yeah. You've made it into a health and safety workbook. I was on, I was on, I was on a news item along with, well, Donald Trump followed me up afterwards, actually. Donald, I'll show you. I've got a little clip. How badly were you using the ladder to make it into a? It was my small diddly ladders. And you used your ladder so badly that you literally made the news. I'm a bad electrician, because apparently I don't, I don't know health and safety. That's okay, I'll teach you everything I know. Teach me the way. Oh, this wind is nuts. If that's not fixed on properly. The arm fell off. <laughs> Back on the boat, when I was really stressed, wondering, okay, what are we gonna do? Because at the minute I'm a bit overwhelmed. I'm in the office, I'm on site. I can't be in two places at once, sometimes three, four places at once. Well, we're taking it really slow, really organic, just boop, 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 bit by bit. Been trying out loads of different ways of doing it and trying out different subcontractors and things. And now we're really happy to say that we're gonna be having Chester on board with us. So he's gonna be on the channel a lot more. So if you don't like him, I'm really sorry. Um, we can always put little timestamps up for you to skip past his segments. I um, don't even like me. <laughs> We've got some absolutely mental projects, everything from full size wind turbines that we're gonna be doing over to turning banks of old car batteries into grid connected batteries. So stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.